Hello guys, welcome to Ashley Lancelot Show. Here we are doing the D and D painting video for uh, the beds I have. I actually went the crazy casting and uh, molding spree, so we have a lot of stuff that I'm going to be painting over time. Uh, so hopefully, um, you know, all the paints will be down in the link below. I'm not going to tell you how I painted and all, all this stuff for the beds. I think it's very self-explanatory how to paint them. You could do one or two layers of it and do a black wash. It'll look nice. Uh, the bed's not going to look as pretty as a lot of modern miniature is due to the fact that the beds are going to be in a tavern base style game. So a lot of the bed sheets, everything else would be dirty. And it's very hard to get white colored uh, clothing, not to get dirty and so forth. And back then there were no bleach. Uh, so hopefully this will help out. Um, you know, D&D is back. It's going to be part of a D&D update. I am going to be doing uh, miniature painting every week. I'll be uploading that as well. I actually got a couple more D&D books I'm going to go look over. We'll be talking about Dungeon Crawl as well and get that sorted uh, for you guys. So that we're going to be doing, I believe, a chapter by chapter, depending how big the chapter is. If the chapter is pretty big and very long, then I'm going to have to just break it into parts. I know that I got to do a lot more for Pathfinder 2 and also 5th edition as well. I haven't really finished. I'm going to be doing D&D story time as well. Craft foam builds. We are getting a 3D printer, resin 3D printer. We'll be printing... Uh, miniatures and hopefully terrains as well i don't think the trains will be that big because the resin printer is not that big as well but i'm going to probably buy a different type of 3d printer to make terrains and so forth i'm going to be teaching myself how to do foam crafting for a lot of the miniature i'll be cutting uh old christmas trees so that i can actually turn them uh, spray paint them green so i can have little pine trees here and there and make a base for it uh, my goal is to make a lot of mush make actual mushroom forest like in the underdark story so that I can actually build it and do this actual campaign for it. I believe the fungus uh, mushroom campaign would be kind of fun. Uh, a lot of them will be a very hard campaign because you can have a brute that doesn't really attack but would just like go run out to the party and spew out poisonous spores and they will have to work, make a constitution save and so forth. And we found a uh, glow in the dark paint and an invisible ink um, paint as well. So we can have a black light shining on the, on the, the mushrooms that will glow in the dark and the players have to navigate around it because with their dark vision and people with low light vision as well. So I think that would be a very good idea in my point of view. Um, a lot of builds are coming. D&D stuff will be back. It just took me a while due to the fact that we are building the studio in my garage and also moving from my old apartment to my actual house. And, and there's a lot of stuff we are doing in this house as well. We are periodically trying to do a campaign once, once every other week due to the fact of the COVID-19. And the virus that's affecting people right now we cannot go to the actual game store and hang around and do stuff to uh to a degree uh south carolina should be fully open in june but there are social distancing and wear a mask uh you have to wear a mask in every business now and i don't i don't mind at all i actually feel a lot safer with that degree until the vaccine is out and so forth. Is there any kind of interesting part of D&D? You want me to go over books to get, magazine? I'm actually part of the D&D Adventures Guild. So I'm actually reading through a lot of campaigns that people actually write. I actually bought a couple books, uh, customized books from them as well. It's pretty good. I'm going to get some Kickstarter miniatures. Uh, I'm going to buy some of them and print some of them. I don't know if you want an ASMR D&D uh, printing video. Just let me know if you guys want that. Then I have to set a different camera up for that. And I can't be in the room once it's printing because I'll be in, because I'll make too much noise while in the garage and so forth as well. But please let me know uh, what you guys want to do. Yes, it's kind of echoey in the studio. We are trying to figure out if you should get some insulation foam or soundproofing foam. 
so far, once we get the bookshelf built and the cloud storage built up on the ceiling, it shouldn't mitigate a lot of the echo. It's just that it's just a big, vast, empty space right now. And if you want me to do a, a voiceover for beds and like painting miniature step-by-step -step layer, let me know. I am going to get an airbrush as well. So I'll be printing large in terrains with airbrush. We'll be working with flax, sands, rocks, and I'll probably go out in the woods in front of my house or around it and get some materials. I know we have a lot of clay underground, so I'm going to be trying to uh, watch videos how to re refine and clean the clay to use it. Because I can use the clay for a lot of things for molding and so forth. It is red clay. If you are interested of that, let me know. We have a lot of crafting stuff I bought over the few months. Uh, I've just been a huge craze and it's just stockpiled over time. The mold and casting, we may do it again if you guys are interested to see different types of mold and casting that we get from 3D printing. But if this 3D printing is supposed to print faster and a lot cleaner cut, I might just end up just 3D printing everything else as well. I am going to review is there any is there any cubic 3D uh, photon 3D resin printer. Damn, it's not really a mouthful for it. But the problem I have right now is getting 90 percent or 90 to 99 percent isopropyl alcohol to clean the resin. For I just got the UV light. I'm waiting for the other cleaning supplies to come in. The one gallon of icy 99% um, uh, isopropyl alcohol costs about like $65. So um, hopefully I don't have to use all of it up. I know that I'm going to be reusing it, filtering it out, and, um, and make sure that none of the vapor escapes due to the fact that the price is very expensive and there's no none of the stores actually sells the damn bottles anymore. You shouldn't get like one or two, three, four bottles for like two to three dollars at Walmart or Target, but they're all out. CVS is all out. Walgreens is all out. So I'm having a little tough time with that, like getting it from Amazon. And uh, it takes about a few weeks for it uh, because a lot of other companies using it for protective gear, PPE gear, disinfecting gear, and so forth. But other than that, um, yeah, there's not really much to do. I know Ash is going to be Go be using the clay to convert uh, my dice chest into a mimic. Uh, we might film that as well. The other project we have is a big foam terrain that I'm going to be doing uh, using Mod Podge. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to make Mod Podge, uh, white wash, black wash, and a brown wash because I do need a black and brown and more white wash uh, for my paints for it. And I'm thinking I'm getting these pre-painted miniatures and get like two of them one that's already pre-painted when you buy at the store and i can repaint the one that the second one so see which one is better if i can make it look a hell of a lot better i mean that would be a great a great thing as well um you know this cannot be done without your guys support um we have a patreon and a stream lab down below if, you know if you want to support us to get more materials and more reviews. If you guys want me to get, if you want us to review some stuff, please let us know. Put down the link in the comment. We'll take a look and see what we can do and uh, review it. We just put the nail polish shaker remover. I'm using as my uh, TND paint shaker, and it works well. I just need to get a agitator for it, uh, basically like a, like a, a actual steel, 100% steel ball bearing. Because if it's plastic, if it's like like plastic paint and stuff, it will chip and it will uh, and it will destroy the pigment of the paint, and we do not want that whatsoever. Um, so far, it looks pretty good and clean on these tavern uh, beds. We are going to 3D print an actual royal bed and a dwarven bed. A dwarven bed is basically a stone slab. Uh, if you guys have never ever read a fantasy book or no known of a dwarven bed they live in caves and mountains and a lot of their stuff is made out of stone barely any wood uh, unless they go out venture out and start cutting them around but usually they use roots that's growing in the growing in the mountains or 
or the cave system for wood. Well, anyhow, guys, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video, enjoyed the painting. Let me know what you guys think. Subscribe, like, and share. Uh, let me know. Uh, please comment back uh, for reviews and so forth. And uh, we'll be start getting D and D video wrapping up as fast as possible. And don't forget to varnish, guys, when you're always done, because you know you don't want your paint all that work to be scratched. So always varnish your finished painting miniatures. But anyhow, guys, take care. Have a nice day. Bye.